there's a famous, or I should say a popular, expression that's being used lately a lot that I hear and I almost feel bad because I don't fit the particular popularity of that expression. It's kind of a, one of those ways of remembrance or those things that people will do in order to cause people to think about or to react to a certain given situation or circumstance in their life and they're able to point to it and say, well, remember when? The expression is, where were you on 9-11? I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, for me, 9-11 had no effect on my life at all. As a matter of fact, it was just one of those things I looked at and said, oh, well, that's bad. And that was about it. Like, you know, well, I expected these things to happen. So it was kind of like, well, that's interesting. Because I was driving along, you know, and I heard on the radio, I'm sure, that, you know, some plane had run into the Twin Towers. Well, I don't live in New York. I don't particularly pay too much attention to the Twin Towers. I had seen great, huge sufferings in the world and been moved by them. But when the Twin Towers got hit, it was like, well, yeah, okay, you know, God's doing a wake-up call. Because I remember what it was like before, and then I re really recall what it was like afterwards. You see, after the Twin Towers were hit, there was like this huge upswing of everybody had these little flags, you know, they would put in their windows. When they first started putting things in their windows, you know, that had the little stick on it, and they started doing this patriotic thing, because before that, they weren't that patriotic. This was before, you know, everybody was like gung-ho now, you know, like military is like, oh yeah, support our local troops or, you know, support our local military, support our officers. It wasn't that way. I remember. I would live through it. I know. And I recall it was like, no, that's not exactly the way it was. You know, I'm sorry, pre-9-11 was different. There wasn't this uber patriotism we have now. You know, now we have a lot of fighting going on and in-house fighting, but I remember people got pretty religious pretty fast and then left it pretty fast too. Because you see, God allowed certain things to happen to people in order to bring about a shock therapy, a reaction, to wake up, smell the roses. And that's what happens sometimes in your life. God has to use something shocking in order to get your attention. Sometimes it's the death of a loved one. I know there are a lot of major pastors that have gone through some really huge crushing breakings that God has caused in their life to make them a little more tender than oh so happy and content with their prosperity and the way that they've been going for quite a while. Suddenly crunch time hits and they're surprised, they're shocked, they're whoa, where did suffering come from? And while they may have taught before about suffering, while well, they may have been aware of and given some pretty good teaching on it, until you suffered, you have no idea what you're talking about. And that's probably why I didn't react to 9-11. I've suffered greatly in my life at different times. I've suffered a lot of pain and sorrow. I've seen a lot of people go through huge devastations, not just in America, but in the world. And so, for me, 9-11 was no big deal. It was just like one of those things that God used in order to teach and to cause and to reach out to people that may have didn't pay much attention to him until suddenly he said, here am I. When you are suffering, you will call out to God. You will cry out for relief from anywhere and everywhere. Whether or not you choose to use the Lord your God as your focal point for your faith to say, God, help me, or whether you choose to go to the doctor or the nurse or you go in some other direction, depends really upon your previous experiences, whether or not God has been with you or God let you go through the suffering. I know God has both delivered me and not delivered me from suffering. God has allowed me months of languishing upon death's door and my deathbed before shockingly Without his ever speaking a word to me, I lived. Without his ever giving me a promise to pass through, I lived. Without ever there being any kind of comfort from other Christians, I lived. And the shocking thing was, I could have gone my own way, but instead I turned to the Lord and I was 
more than happy to have gone through the experience of feeling that emptiness, that loneliness, that death to my joy, that look in my eyes that showed nothing but death and devastation. Because I remember looking at when I was in Long Beach VA hospital, looking in the mirror in the hallways that at night when the, the lights were on, the hallways you couldn't see through outside, but you could see they reflected like mirrors, you know, and I looked in the the mirror and I could see my own reflection, you know, because I didn't really pay attention to mirrors in those days, but when I was going down the hallway to the gym, I looked and saw my eyes and they were dead. There was no sparkle and there had always been a sparkle. There was no life and there had always been such joy. There was no anything there except just this dull, dead, worn out person. God used that time greatly in my life to, I call it the exposition of a human being, when I wrote and talked about how much suffering can be used by God to bring about the intimacy and the reality of what He wants us to be. When He crushes our flesh and wearies our soul and devastates our spirit to where the only place we can turn to really is just lay there and experience what God wants us to know. And that really is just Himself. Because God will stay there and wait until you've gone through and endured the full measure of what he's trying to accomplish in you, as well as to give you the full cup of his sufferings. Not many people choose to suffer. Some of us, though, it's just a natural recourse, a part of the lessons that God has taught us all the days of our life, that we might be able to comfort those that are in sorrow, that are in pain, to give to them those things that we have been given. Bread corn is bruised. Many of us cannot be used to become food for the world's hungry until we are born broken in Christ's hands. Bread corn is bruised. Christ's blessing often means sorrow, but even sorrow is not too great a price to pay for the privilege of touching other lives with a blessing. The sweetest things in this world today have come to us through tears and pain. God has made me bread for his elect, and if it be needful that the bread must be ground in the teeth of the lion to feed his children, blessed be the name of the Lord, from Ignatius. We must burn out before we can give out. We cease to bless when we cease to bleed. Poverty, hardship, and misfortune have pressed many a life to moral heroism and spiritual greatness. Difficulty challenges energy and perseverance. It calls into activity the strong qualities of the soul. It was the weights of the father's old clock that kept it going. Many a headwind has been utilized to make port. God has appointed opposition as an incentive to faith and holy activity. The most illustrious characters of the Bible were bruised and threshed and ground into bread for the hungry. Abraham's diploma styles him as a father of the faithful. That was because he stood at the head of his class in affliction and obedience. Jacob suffered severe threshings and grindings, and Joseph was born and bruised and beaten and had to go through Potiphar's kitchen and Egypt's prison to get to his throne. David hunted like a part of the little buggy got it. David hunted like a partridge on the mountain, bruised, weary, and footsore, and was ground into bread for a kingdom. Paul never could have been bread for Caesar's household if he had not endured the bruisings, the whippings, and stonings. He was ground into fine flour for the royal family. Like combat, like victory. If you, if for you he has appointed special trials, be assured that in his heart he has kept you a special place. A soul surely bruised is a soul elect. God will use what suffering you go through in order to touch a soul and a person who you may not know, but who needs to hear that grace and mercy that you've been given. God loves you so much, he allows you to be afflicted as he was afflicted, so that you can be Jesus to someone else in their name.